This is a part of the ocean called the estuary, and you'll never see this on a TV special because it, it's a place where river water mixes with the bay, and it's very murky, dark water. And uh, you could ask a photographer, they will tell you, you can't get good pictures in murky, muddy water. When we bring people out on this dock, really amazing things happen because for most of them, they've never been in an environment like this. They have no idea that anything lives out here in this water. They just see murky water. But when we get the little trays out and we show them the little tiny things that are out here and that that's all alive, you just see their faces are transformed, especially the kids get so excited because they had no idea that this was here. And you can't really get people to care about things like life on Earth in the big scale until they've had some direct experience with it. If it's just pictures on TV or words in a book or just one more cause that you're supposed to worry about, that doesn't work. What works is when people see it and get excited and have held it or touched it themselves. Then they get to care about it. How many of you all like seafood? Anybody like seafood? Well, if you like seafood, this estuary is the most important part of the ocean for you because this is where the seafood comes from. This is where the shrimp grow up, this is where the crabs grow up, mullet, we catch redfish here, all kinds of things that live in this murky area because there's so much food here. Oh, here comes a little blue crab, see that? Swimming on the surface. What does all this stuff That's mean? That's a baby blue crab. They get to be I mean, what we're looking here is aside from some biological specimens that really wouldn't have much value, if we put this into relationship to the fishing industry, and this is one little town, Panacea. So it's got a service station up here, bait and tackle. It's got a restaurants that are scattered around here. If people catch fish and they're casting out here, then they're going to basically go buy and be part of the economy and they're going to go eat at the restaurant there, they're going to buy their gas or trinkets or t-shirts or whatever, and it's all based around the worms. It's all based around this mud and all this other stuff and the shrimp because if you don't have all these little creepy crawlers and you don't have all this benthic life, then you don't have fish, crabs, and shrimp to eat them. So consequently, if anything happens to this, it's gone and that's the food chain and the food chain is there. So when this is covered with high water, in come the redfish, in come the trout, in come the mullet to forage and feed and look around for all the good stuff that's over here. And it's all part of this related ecosystem and it's all this big web of life which all begins in the lowly mud or in the muddy water or the plankton. And uh, most people don't like to get out into this type of environment uh, because it's kind of muddy and yucky and that kind of thing. But nevertheless, that is where the, uh, the great mother load of food and nutrients and everything else begins. And if you don't have this, you just don't have the quality of life. So the realtor that's selling the big beach cottage from the people who come down here and say, ah, beautiful, and I'm going out fishing, and they're going to enjoy that fresh flounder, which is bu busy eating mole crabs or grass shrimp or things of that sort, they don't often realize that there's a connection. And unfortunately, they destroy, in many cases, the habitat and the environment and fill in the marshes to get a better view of the waterways and that sort of thing, and consequently destroy the very fabric of, uh, of life that's there. But still, even the developer is here because we have clean water and abundant life and that creates a market for people to come down to it. And if that is gone through some natural disaster or unnatural disaster like being smothered in oil and that sort of thing, then we just lose and it's, an, it's not a repairable situation. I say it's not repairable, it's not repairable for us. It's probably not shortly repairable for the life that's over here, but in the long run, you know, we've seen mass extinctions, life comes back, things come back with it. But will we be here to deal with it? Probably not, not if we don't really get, get in and take care of what we have. This is a hydroid, which I just pulled off one of our floating docks. And it's, uh, it looks like a plant, but it's really an animal, a very complex animal. 
related to the corals and the, uh, the jellyfish and all these others and the groups of cnidarians and hydroids just cover the place like bushes and they're filled with life and the only really best way to see that life is put this under a dissecting scope or a microscope and you'll see all these incredible creatures.